Okay, so let's do a quick little uh, status check, unboxing, uncasing. Uh, this is my first time traveling with a TSA hard shell, bringing a guitar with me on a flight, on a domestic flight. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna try to do some, uh, some gigs, some just like an open stage tour um, starting tonight. So um, I just got in, just got checked in, and I'm ready to take a look at this guitar and uh, I'll check everything. I don't have any way to check the electronics right now, but I'm gonna check just overall, just make sure that it hasn't been damaged in flight, and uh, also talk about what I've brought with me, which is sort of a little bit of a subset of what's normally in my guitar bag. So, uh, first off, uh, it's uh, great to have these TSA cases, because obviously they've got a key based on the lock number, and so you can lock the case, like your carry-ons, and all right. Um, following advice from the internet, I took some uh, steps to immobilize the guitar to try to keep it um, uh, from shifting if it was uh, in flight, and also to specifically wrap the headstock and to specifically put something between the strings and the fretboard. Now, I don't know how important that actually is, but I figured what's the harm and a uh, little bubble wrap over the bridge and bridge pins as well. But this is, you know, a well padded case and um, you know, jam some paper and bubble wrap into these spots and uh, back here with the strap button. And it's not really, not really inclined to move. So start by just getting it out of its cocoon. Uh, I also, Again, I don't know how much this matters, but it's hard for me to picture the, the physics of why this would matter, but um, conventional wisdom says you should detune, you know, slack the strings uh, a couple of steps as a best practice. So I did that as well, just what's the harm? Okay, so, um, yeah. Nothing appears out of order. It seems to have gone uh, through the um, through the flight well. I'm gonna check. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is check to just make sure that my packing job did not end up inadvertently draining the battery. Uh, so the tuner lights up, and it's yeah functioning. So I'll tune it momentarily, I guess and subject you to that. So now let me talk about what I brought with me in the case. So here underneath the headstock, um, I've got the strap. I've got a cable, just in case. Uh, I go to the say that there was never a cable, but that would be a pretty, pretty bad deal. I've got a little charger for um, some spare batteries that I've brought with me for my camera, but it's not really part of my charging here, so I'm excited to talk about that. Um, I've got um, a little cheat sheet because I don't have my lyric book with me, and you know, of my there's um, almost 200 songs in the the book that we take to gigs, and out of those, I have about 50 uh, or so memorized that I could do like completely off the top of my head, both the lyrics and the chords and, and everything, without with a, a pretty high degree of confidence that I won't forget something. Um, oftentimes with other songs, you know, I just, I need a glance or a reminder, <clears throat> just a quick check of like, what are the chords in the bridge or something like that. Uh, what's the first line of the third verse. Um, so I have them like familiarized, but not memorized. So I've just put down, you know, a reminder to myself of what the songs are I have memorized. And then as I do these open stages as prep, I may do what I used to do sort of old school on my set list, which is write a few extra crib notes for songs I don't have memorized that I want to do nonetheless. So like some new songs I, I hope to, to bring into the mix. So I've got a little, uh, my crib sheet. I've got one of the microphones I prefer. Uh, this one, happens to be, this is the ATM, uh, Audio-Technica ATM61HE. Uh, Closely related to the uh, my very favorite, the Audio Technica 
1829 HE. Um, I've got this, uh, I'm carrying this clip for mounting my phone and clipping it to an object to, so I can do a live stream if I so desire. Um, but a couple extra sets of strings. Originally it was my intention to change the strings when I got here, but then I had a little extra time before I left and I changed them uh, at home instead. Uh, and then I've got this little uh, grab bag of some odds and ends that I might need in a pinch uh, or that I know that I'll need. So, so for me, cough drops are an absolute necessity. They won't fall in uh, their little bag, so that, that trick didn't work very well. Got a uh, string changing tool, so it's a combination of winder, clip, and puller. Got a handful of business cards. Um, of late, I've actually had to hand some out, so it's good to have a few on hand. And I have a capo. Um, I don't actually play with a capo, but this, um, I forget who had this hack. I stole this hack from somebody online. Uh, I think it was Paul Davids that I heard it from. Uh, about just using a capo as sort of a makeshift camera holder, uh, phone holder, if you want to just uh, so I like to have one because that that hack really does work pretty well, uh, especially for uh, orienting the camera in a um, portrait uh, orientation. So anyway, that's what I've got with me, and cross my fingers, the guitar looks good, and uh, let's get out of here and get uh, get playing. So see you at the open stage.